Are you afraid to play alone in the dark? Do you like the sound of tearing flesh? And have you ever checked your sanity meter? The Fright Factor is in full effect as we break down the scariest games of all time right here, right now on Filter. <laughs> Mazzotta, and welcome to Filter, a hand-picked top 10 video game countdown is voted on by you, the viewer, at G4TV.com. We're at a cemetery in Los Angeles, California for a very special episode of Filter on some of the scariest games ever. If we're going to talk about the games that jar your spirits, then why not do it from a place where they jar up spirits? What makes a game scary, and what are some of the scariest games of all time? Here's what a few people had to say. What makes a game scary is really those, those moments that catch you off guard, I think. What you don't see sometimes is the scariest. You gotta have obviously creatures that, that creep you out. You know, you gotta have a design that looks scary right off the top. The graphics now are so good that it, de developers are able to come up with some really frightening imagery of ghosts and mangled bodies and blood and guts everywhere. storyline, it's the, uh, the graphics behind it, um, the atmosphere that we're looking for to get something that'll grab people by the throat and kind of give them a little bit of an excitement. A game can, can suck you into its atmosphere and get you going along and thinking something is very calm and then all of a sudden surprise you in a, a horrific way and then it's accomplished that. Soundtracks, some of the best scary games have really unnerving soundtracks that just sort of, they don't sound right and they keep you on edge the whole time you're playing the game. Because you can have fantastic graphics and a great setting, but you basically need to address all the senses that are involved in playing the game. What your imagination lets you believe you're about to see can be the scariest thing in anything. And I think a great game, no different. Now that we know what it takes to make a scary game, let's find out which scary games make the cut. We start our countdown with a game that launched the survival horror genre. In Alone in the Dark, you assume the role of either Private Eye Edward Carnby or Emily Hartwood and investigate a series of mysteries which relate to the occult and the supernatural. The PC classic was heavily influenced by the stories of fiction writer H.P. Lovecraft. Here's the game you loved as the 10th scariest game of all time. Well, the original one is what all the Resident Evil games respawn from. It's the quintessential first ever survival horror game, and it definitely set the pace for everything else. <laughs> That game was the originator of all this, you know, survival horror. It was, you know, really slow-paced game. You're not a superhero guy, you know. You don't have the shotguns. You don't have all, like, these crazy machine guns running around. He was just, like, a normal person, you know, trying to survive, trying to figure out what's going on. And it played on your mind, you know, what's going on in your head, trying to keep your sanity playing this game. It just, it just freaks you out. It messes you up. works have also inspired a number of movies, among them Hellraiser, Alien, and the zombie cult classic Army of Darkness. Speaking of zombies, how about we gun down a few with the game at number nine. In House of the Dead, the object is simple. Kill, kill, and then kill some more. 
With a constant barrage of dirty monkeys, winged canine mutants, and flesh-eating zombies coming at you, the first-person shooter is sure to leave your trigger finger sore and your heart rate soaring. And when a game is this good, Hollywood's sure to come a-callin'. Mindfire Entertainment has stepped in to make a movie version of The House of the Dead. Here's a quick behind-the-scenes look. I never made a movie where, where you have around uh, 50 explosions, 500 stunts, 20,000 bullets in the air, and uh, a huge Matrix shot. I think that we're very faithful to the spirit of the game, the idea of uh, a first-person shooter, which is action, 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 non-stop action. So that's an example of a game turned movie. Our next title did it the other way around. Based off the phenomenally popular film franchises is Aliens vs. Predator 2. The game's fright factor owes a lot to the music, which changes from subtle to dramatic whenever a battle intensifies. But the terror is in the lighting, or lack thereof, I should say. Strobe lights, red security lamps, and shoulder-mounted flashlights light the way by keeping you in the dark. Here's the game you chose at number eight. <laughs> For me, one of the scariest games was Alien vs. Predator 2. I think in first person, you believe you're there. The scariest part of it was just waiting for the alien to finally pop out. You know, you heard them, the sound effects were incredible, and you knew they were out there, and you were so immersed in the game, you really got scared. If you're playing as a Marine first person, you're looking around for this alien, you see a little motion sensor, you hear claw marks rolling around, you turn around, and the aliens just bite off the guy's head. It's not as scary if you play as an alien, because if you're the alien, you're scaring everybody else. But if you're playing as a space marine, you're cruising around, and you're hearing your, your comrades getting killed. Come on, that's scary. Who kicks more butt, the space marines, the aliens, or the predators? Well, you can decide for yourself, because the three single-player modes allow you to play as each. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll keep counting down the scariest games ever. Does Clive Barker's Undying take the top spot, or is it a different kind of undead that brings home the bacon? Find out right after this when Filter returns. Not suited for minors. I am the one causing the trouble here. The ah! single most offensive movie ever made. Yeah, that's Give a good. thumbs up, you know, in the words of Michael Jackson. <laughs> the shocker comedy you've been waiting for is finally available. Oh, not now, honey, not now. It's the underground comedy movie, available only through this special TV offer. <laughs> Music by No Effects, Gutter Mouth, and more. <laughs> With supermodels in the john, taking a Welcome to the What's Up Top Show. Offensive, disgusting, and damn funny. How dumb are you to be on the show, mother... <laughs> With Gina Lee Nolan being naughty. <laughs> Michael Clark Duncan as the gay virgin. I'm saving myself for the right man. And Mr. Right White is right here. That's hey, not hey. you, no. Slash and Joey Buttafuoco. The underground comedy movie is available for only $19.95. Composed of brutal, in-your-face skits such as the porno review. Oh. Arnold Schwollenbecker. Uh. Virgin Hunter and Friends. Donna of the Dead. Oh, yeah. Dickman fights lesbians. Oh, and much, 
much more footage we can't show you on TV. The censors won't allow us to show you how far this movie really goes. The underground comedy movie is guaranteed to offend your money back. Only $19.95. Order now and get a bonus video absolutely free. That's two videos for only $19.95. Don't wait. Call now to guarantee the bonus video. Can't charge it? No problem. Debit it. Also available on DVD. Call the number on your screen now. Must be 18 years old to order. Warning. Do not attempt any of what you are about to see. <laughs> Jackass, the movie. Rated R. Now playing in theaters everywhere. What's going on here? Yo, I get on G4 and open the door to all type of games. I get the console, the cartridge, and it's all the same. I give you open up the secrets. You better listen, because everything on G4 is going to glisten, 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 glisten. The seventh stop of the EA Sports Madden Challenge took place in Tampa at the Sun Dome on the campus of the University of South Florida. The finals came down to Willie Jackson and Antoine Marshall. Early in the fourth quarter, Donovan McNabb finds Chad Lewis in the end zone for the six-yard touchdown catch, putting the Eagles up by 25 points. The Rams would start to come back with his 20-yard touchdown pass from Kurt Warner to Marshall Falk, but it was too little, too late, and Willie Jackson was on his way to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Flip, flip to the right. Oh. Oops. Welcome back to Filter. I'm Diane Mazota, counting down the scariest games ever. The rankings for Filter shows come directly from the responses you post on the G4 website. To make your vote count, log on to g4tv.com slash filter and select the filterator. Then choose a category, vote on a scale of 1 to 10, and we'll take care of the rest. While you're there, be sure to post your suggestions for topics and games you'd like to see covered in future episodes. We've only begun to highlight the games you're afraid to play in the dark, so let's keep moving. At number 7, we have the gothic action game Devil May Cry. As the lead character Dante, you'll go up against scissor-wielding witches, faceless enemies, and dolls with razor blades. Forget the razor blades, it's the dolls that creep me out. Devil May Cry is some, somewhat like uh, Resident Evil, but it's much more medieval. It's a large castle, um, lots of rooms, very dark, dingy still. Even when you go outside, it's, it's, it's kind of spooky. A lot of uh, fog sitting around, a lot of weird things just kind of crawling around. You're the main character, Dante, and um, you're fighting another devil, I guess, of Sparta, and he's like half devil, half human. And you can transform in between the two from his human mode to his devil mode. And when he's in devil, he gets you know twice the speed, twice the power. He just, you know, just whoops everybody when he gets into that. It was fun just kind of walking around looking at the, just checking out the castle. You just go up to everything and ask them and think, all right, push X, what is it? Even something that just like, this is a regular part of scenery, you just had to go check it out. Even something's gonna jump you from behind. <laughs> now let's move from Dante's Inferno to the hell-raising world of Clive Barker. Clive Barker's Undying is a horror-based first-person shooter set in an enormous haunted mansion on the coast of Ireland during the 1920s. In the role of explorer slash occultist, Patrick Galloway, your job is to uncover the mystery behind an evil curse leveled against a good friend and his family. Intense action sequences keep your nerves on edge and your butt on the edge of its seat. But it's the sound that scores big in this game. You can actually hear flesh tearing and blood spilling. Ew! I think Clyde Barker's Undying had some truly creepy moments. Like there's one moment where you're walking down a hallway and you see the drapes from the windows, you know, fluttering and you kind of hear the wind whispering by you. I mean, even the artwork in that thing was pretty scary. Disturbing. It was just, you know, a dark brooding kind of look and there was a lot of tension all the time while you were playing the game. He has kind of fanciful characters uh, stuck in amazingly dark. I mean, it's the kind of stuff that you sit there thinking about afterwards, going, you know, what was he thinking? Why was he thinking that? With Undying, Clive Barker set out to create one of the scariest games of all time, and he hit a home run. 
but there are a ton of games out there that tried to be scary and struck out. Here's a look at what you thought were some of the least scary games of all time. Look like they were doomed from the beginning. And on that note, Undying may be Clive Barker's baby, but Doom is its daddy. Though Castle Wolfenstein is on record as the initial first person shooter to be released, Doom is the game that made a lasting impression. It scared you out of your mind and into a fresh change of pants, while laying the groundwork for countless imitations to follow. Doom chimes in at number five. The first game to make me jump was Doom, definitely. The uh, pink gorilla monsters around the corners when you'd come around and they just jump out at you. It's the hordes of monsters that kept coming after you unrelentlessly, just one after another after another. You can go out and blow things up and battle against huge odds. It was more of the game where you felt like you're running for your life. Fans of the Doom series are holding their breath in anticipation of Doom 3. John Carmack's latest brainchild was the darling of this year's E3 and had fans waiting in line for hours just to catch a glimpse. Moving on in the countdown, we arrive at spot number four and Eternal Darkness, an action game rooted in the tradition of an Indiana Jones adventure. What separates Eternal Darkness from the other scary games you play is that it plays you. The game features a sanity meter and as it goes down, your sense of reality goes up in flames. Here, let these guys explain it. Eternal Darkness is an interesting game simply because it doesn't go for traditional scares, it just messes with you. So you'll be playing and strange things will start to happen, like your TV will go mute, or the TV will shut off, or uh, all of a sudden the, the game will crash. What the heck? And it's just, you know, a faked element of the game. It's more of a mental scariness, you know what I'm saying, with the camera shaking. It's kind of more of a psych psychological effect on you. It's, it's almost like the antithesis against Resident Evil. meter makes for some pretty scary moments, but what game do you think has the scariest moment? When we get back, we'll take a look at the scariest moment in a game. And with only three games left on the list, it's a tight race for trophy. Did you speak up for Silent Hill as the scariest game of all time, or did you award the photo finish to Fatal Frame? Find out who comes out on top when Filter returns. How would you like to have the thrill of your favorite theme park ride right in your own home? Well, now you can actually experience a totally new dimension on your own computer. It's called Extreme 3D, and it's like nothing you've ever seen before. X3D's radical new award-winning technology makes the images actually jump right out of the screen. With X3D, see movies, DVDs, and home videos like you've never seen them before. You can even turn your own pictures and videos into three dimensions. Improve your kids' grades with amazing three-dimensional educational CDs. Hook your TV up through your PC and watch sporting events in the third dimension. All the games you now own can be played in Extreme 3D. That's right, X3D turns your existing game collection into a virtual reality experience. Supercharging your PC has never been easier. Look, 
Just plug the virtual reality converter between the screen and the computer, and you've given your computer the ultimate upgrade for the most incredible viewing experience ever. And now, for a limited time, you can get the entire X3D system for just 10 low payments of $9.95. Look at all you're getting. The virtual reality converter and installation software. This transforms all of your flat images into new three-dimensional experiences. Plus, you get the conversion software that gives you everything you need to view three-dimensional photos, videos, movies, and games. And you'll also get one pair of revolutionary X3D viewing glasses. Order right now and we'll include 15 exciting games. They're all free when you order X3D today. Look, you get everything. A total value of over $800 for just 10 easy payments of $9.95. This offer won't last, so call right now. Call 1-800-490-5566. X3D has a 30-day money-back guarantee less shipping and handling. So if X3D isn't the best home 3D system you've ever seen, just send it back. No questions asked. Call 1-800-490-5566. That's 1-800-490-5566. Join us for the Games and Ghouls Marathon. Eight solid hours of G4's Haunted Halloween. Continuing next. down to the last three spots. But before we move on, let's get a quick recap of the games we've shown so far. Alone in the Dark kicked off the action-adventure craze and it kicks off our countdown at 10. House of the Dead takes up residence in the number nine spot. Aliens vs. Predator 2 rips humanity a new one at number seven. Burning fires of hell rage for Dante as Devil May Cry engulfs the seventh spot. Clive Barker's Undying lives at number six. Doom's your daddy, it's number five. And game number four leaves us in eternal darkness. Well, not. Still three games left to shed light on, so let's keep moving. The game at number three is all about capturing spirits. In Fatal Frame, you play as a young Japanese girl named Miku, who's ventured into a mysterious, you guessed it, mansion in search of her missing brother. What makes this game slightly off center from your average spooker is that your weapon of choice is a camera. Capturing a ghost in your sights and grabbing a snapshot will kill it. Take a look inside our lens and see for yourself. They use a great combination of uh, a new take on the like Resident Evil style kind of gameplay, but then they have great little details. When I was playing the game and I was in a completely silent area, I kept hearing this weird humming noise. You hear something, humming noise, something in the background. If you turn the volume up, there's actually a lot of background actually talking, so that's kind of spooky. It was very, very dark, very disturbing, and it was a very classic ghost story. And I haven't seen a video game do a ghost story without guns, and this one did it, and it did it effectively. Kind of gives new meaning to the phrase, capture the spirit. 
And in the spirit of this episode, it's time to dig a little deeper and find out what you guys thought was the scariest moment ever in a video game. Here's what you had to say. There was moments when I was uh, playing Nocturne, and there were some moments in that game that just were terrifying. A combination of lights, sounds, music, shadow, and the element of surprise of these zombies just jumping out on you, and it was pretty, pretty wicked. I, I think it's a shared moment. I think the first time anyone saw the dogs in Resident Evil, for the first time, a lot of people filled their pants right there. So you walk through this hallway, you know, you've walked through it before and nothing had happened, and there's these big windows and suddenly crash. Dog comes lunging through the uh, glass. I'm going around a corner and I know any second now these dogs are gonna jump out of a window and, and every time I still jump two feet in the air. I think it's, it's the fact that everything's quiet and then bam, definitely the dog's jumping out of the window. It makes sense that the dogs tweaked you out the most because they're in one of the games that freaked you out the most. When it came to the scariest games ever, the Silent Hill and Resident Evil franchises topped your list. While both games shred your nerves, they do it in different ways. The first messes with your head while the second messes with your heart. In the Silent Hill series, you roam the pitch black streets of an abandoned town solving puzzles while trying to stay alive. You'll face winged demons, skinless dogs, and a host of psychopaths. But it's your brain that takes a beating in Silent Hill. The game's creators actually designed it to frighten people on an instinctive level. In the Resident Evil series, it's not so much instincts as it is reflexes. The big scare tactic in these games is the boo factor, with zombies and dogs pouncing on you from out of nowhere. Sure, the scares may be cheap, but the memories are priceless. Everyone remembers the first time they played Resident Evil. It's time to turn down the lights and see who's packing more fright. Silent Hill goes up against Resident Evil and yet another filtered face-off. The scariest game that I've played, yeah. Resident Evil, by far. It's uh, shockingly scary, um, to the point where I'm a grown man and I can't play it alone. I saw a guy crouching down on the ground, walked up to him, turned around, a zombie with blood all over his mouth. It's almost like you're, you're dropped into the middle of a horror movie. And just with the lightning and the sound and ambient sound effects, you're just like, oh, hey. I mean, it really sets a tone to be a zombie standing there like in the dark, but they don't really move towards you until you get somewhat close to them. And then like I'll get closer to where this zombie is and he starts moving and it freaks you out because it's like nothing's supposed to move at you. It's like everything's cool and then boom, all of a sudden you're, you know, you're toast. I like Silent Hill 2 to be a little scarier for the simple reason that I think that they got the fog effects to be a lot creepier. Now let's be reasonable, fog's scary. It was just realistic, you know, you got that creepy little girl running around the town, you got the environment, you know, it's a small city, but there's no one there, and you know something just ain't right, and it sits in the back of your head, and they play on that with the music and the settings and the, the way the game progresses. The game's basically designed to scare the pants off you. What the hell is it? I know most people think about being scared as that moment when something jumps out at you. That's sort of the shock part. But for me, the scariest moment in the game is the opening sequence in Silent Hill 2. Nothing jumps out, the camera's moving really slow, there's just this grungy old bathroom and this creepy music, and you just know something bad's gonna happen. So, is it Silent Hill or Resident Evil? Both have reason enough to be the number one choice, however the polls are closed, your votes were counted, and the series you chose as being the scariest is... Resident Evil. Thrill, but where you're concerned, it's the evil that chills. Well, that wraps up this episode of Filter. Remember, the opinions expressed on this show are yours, not mine. So make your vote count on future episodes by logging on to the Filter show page at g4tv.com filter. Until then, I'm Diane Mazota, and I'll see you next time.